Welcome to the Pilates Show, where we explore Pilates tips and techniques to help deepen the skill level of the movement educator while having fun. Hi, this is Doreen at Fusion Pilates, and I'm with Christine, and we're going to talk about feet and straps today, which is a typical exercise that we do on the reformer. However, with a couple of little modifications, we can make it so much more efficient for the clients. So I'm gonna talk about Christine's hamstrings. And we know that the hamstrings go from your ischial tuberosity down past the knee. And when we go into a hip hinge, that actually makes the hamstring lengthen. So she's lifting her ischial tuberosities, and you can stop right there, away from their attachment point on the lower leg. So you can see that, that well, maybe you can't see, but this got a little tauter when she was doing that. So then come back up, Christine. Right? So when she goes forward, there's her eccentric contraction of the hamstring. And when she comes back up, the hamstrings are concentrically working to bring her back up. Now, if you do that same thing in a round back version, notice that her ischial tuberosities, and you can stop right there, because her ischial tuberosities have not moved away from her knee joint. They're in the same length. So She's actually moving from her back, which is fine if you're doing a roll down for some other point and purpose, but not for feet and straps. So roll all the way back up for me. And I'm gonna have Christine lie on her back and we'll do some feet and strap simulation with the red band. Okay. So yes, the clients will have their feet in the straps and we're just gonna use her one leg. So if her leg comes up, and she lifts the leg and gets some tension onto her hamstring. She's actually lengthening through the hamstring here now. And then as she presses back down, hamstring is shortening to come back into its normal length. But on this one, she's going to roll up and she's gonna tuck her tailbone under. So go ahead and roll up for me, Christine, and roll as if your tailbone was coming up off the floor. Right, so she hasn't changed the length of what's going on in her hamstring, and she's actually hinging from her back. So if we could see underneath her right now, her spine is pressed into the ground. She's in spinal flexion. She's bypassing what's happening at the hamstrings. And as she goes to press the leg back down, she's not really using that hamstring at all. She's hinging from her lower back which is why most clients, it's really important for them to know, hey, I want to hip hinge, so go ahead back into your flat back version. I wanna hinge from the hip joint, lengthen through that hamstring, so I get maximum amount of length happening here, so that when I press back down, I'm actually contracting through the back of the leg and bringing the leg all the way down, hopefully into a nice long, hip extension as well, so and you can relax. So you can start to think of that, teaching the client where their hamstrings are and the difference between rounding and tucking the tailbone under and keeping the sits bones lifting away from the knee joint gets them to do something different, what they think they're doing, and not really doing. That's it for today. If you have a different take on today's subject or if there's anything you'd like to see covered in an upcoming episode, we'd love to hear from you. Comment below, on Facebook, Twitter, or in the forum at fusionpilatesedu.com. See you next time and never stop learning.